microdose, yeah, microdose, 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 dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose. What's good, y'all? Kush Ace here coming to you. Microdose number 161. It's a pound drone. You can say it backwards and forwards. And coming to me, returning to this show, uh, I feel like I'm a little rushed, but uh, that's that's a whole technical thing. Coming out with May 12th, Robert Rodriguez is hypnotic. Please welcome back to the show, Mr. Cy Pena. My man, what is good? Uh, it's only been seven months, but as you just said, dude, like a lot has gone on since we last talked. Yep, no, definitely. Uh, in these past seven months, Robert Rodriguez thing was, uh, man, it was definitely a, a, a game changer just on the way I see, I view productions and how everything runs. Right. Um, so definitely set a standard uh, from the from everyone in the crew to everyone in the cast. I mean, it was it was an amazing experience. I I mean, I I I still look back and I'm just like, man, I did that. Oh, cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, dude. I'm so excited. So. First off, since we, last time we talked, we were plugging Janelle Smith's movie, Nova, her sci-fi ex, ex, action extraordinary, Nova. And um, what movies are weird, man, because when we were talking, you were saying Nova was the first movie, first anything you got booked for. But for whatever reason, like nine other projects came out after it or, or before it, I should say. You, you filmed nine other projects and they all came out first. About two weeks later, after our, our last time we spoke, the movie we're talking about today that comes out May 12th actually made its cinematic debut in Mexico and Japan in 2021. Um, I don't yeah. know if you're aware of that or not, but that's, I have no. movies are weird, dude. <laughs> so yeah. this is a surprise to you? Yes. Yes, it is. I wow. did not know that. Yeah, man. So, like, I'm going going through all the movies I want to see at least over the next three months. And I'm seeing, oh, Ben Affleck. Yeah, I like Ben Affleck. Robert Rodriguez. I like Robert Rodriguez. And I'm scrolling down I was like, that handsome bastard looks familiar. Oh, shit, it's Cy. What are you? <laughs> and, and that's when I like hit you up. I was like, dude, you're in a Robert Rodriguez. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I'm in the background, but you know, it's, it's some small little thing, you know. I was like, dude, no, no, this is huge. Okay, so how did you get cast for this? What was what was the process like? How did you meet Robert Rodriguez? Did you meet Robert Rodriguez? Um, too many questions. Start at the beginning. So uh, it was actually really cool. This happened to me twice. Cause I, I can't make this up. I go in and uh, I'm a taller Latino, so you know I stand out a little bit with the extras. And they say, "Hey, um, you might be bumped up to a hero extra." And I said, "What's that mean?" They said, "That means for sure we're going to see your face." Hmm. And I said, "Of course." Of course, yeah. Let's do it. So then they say, okay, we're gonna put you as a Mexican federale. So they they put me in the dressing room, dress me up, you know, gave me my own hanger, gave me my own little little room, mm. real quick to change. Yeah, it was real cool, real cool. From there, I went to set, um, did my first scene, which basically was uh, we were escorting people out of uh, La Plaza, which is basically like El Centro. Um, how how could I say that in English? Um, Town Square. Town Square. Perfect. Thank you, sir. There it is. So we're, we're pushing everybody back out of the town square. Um, ben Affleck is running around Mexico and it gets to a point where the hypnotic thing, I don't want to give too much away from the movie, but you know, there is some mind control going on. So we turn around and I get to draw, I get to draw a pistol uh, at Ben Affleck's face. Oh no. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the cool thing is, so that's, that's the first part, you know, they tell us what we're going to do. They're like, okay, you're going to draw, draw guns. And then they're like, Hey, by the way, we're going to go ahead and switch it up. You're going to draw guns on Ben and then midway, you're going to pretend like you're getting, you know, hip, hypnotized and you're pulling your gun on William Fittner. Right. So, man, I had two, you know, just, you know, two superstar celebrities, you know, yeah, right, right there on set. With me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Alice, but as well, she was also there on set too. So I got to see these, these guys just go to work and it was, it was awesome. It was an amazing experience from there. They said, hey, you know what? We need you to come back for another for the same role as Mexican Federale, where you're gonna be go, you're gonna corral, you're gonna corral some people, um, you know, kind of in a, in, a, in a street corner. And I said, okay. okay, that's fine. So I came back. I did that. It was I was way, way in the back, but Ben Affleck and Elise Berger were were driving through the city on a motorcycle. So it was amazing. Oh wow. So I got to work 
yeah, I got to witness that. I got to see some stunt action go on. Um, and then this is when it, it really just became a super blessing. They said, hey, how tall are you? And I said, uh, how tall do you need me to be? And I said, <laughs> They said, great answer. They said, would you mind coming back as a stand-in? And I said, what, what do you mean? So uh, change out your clothes. We're going to give you a J.D. Pardo. So J J.D. Pardo is the uh, co-lead with Ben Affleck in this. Well, okay. Al Elise Barriga and J.D. Pardo and Ben Affleck, they all um, co-leading this thing. Okay. So I said, of course, I'll be a stand-in for him. Mm -hmm. So I went from working two days on set to work in a total of uh, 10, 10 days on set. Dude. The last, the last, yeah, the last eight days I was there, I was working side by side at Robert Rodriguez's hip. So he knows my name, man, which is to me, it was just, I was just starstruck. I was trying not to fangirl. Right. I mean, I was doing everything in my, in my yeah, everything I possibly could, um, you know, got to be side by side, Ben, um, side by side, JD Pardo, you know, side by side, Phil Wigner. So I got to speak with them and that was, again same thing life changing um but yeah i went through several scenes i would mm -hmm. hop off and then you know we were called the b team right so the b team would hop in they'd help set up lights um do all the all the all the pacing of, of how the scene is going to go um and then the blocking and then from there the a team would come out mm -hmm. and uh yeah we just kind of run it for them and then they'd, they'd go in and do their thing so. For those who don't know, a uh, stand-in is so they're not going to have Ben Affleck, Elisa Braga, and, and Mr. Pardo just stand around while lights and all that other shit are being set up and furniture gets moved around. And believe me, as someone who's worked on plenty of sets, you set it up, and then someone takes a scan. It's like, hmm, I don't like the way that couch looks. Tilted at forty-five degrees. You know, get rid of the whole couch. You're like, I just took this up three flights of stairs, man. Anyway, uh, anyway, <laughs> so they're not going to have the stars wait for all that so a gentleman like you will stand in because you're about the same height maybe they give you the same haircut they just throw the clothes on you so they get the lighting correctly that's uh for those that didn't know that's what a stand-in does um you're hip to hip with rodriguez like are he's a very busy man obviously but are you getting to ask any questions are you having any just like casual conversation with the man like what's what's the experience I, like or are you just keeping quiet the whole time like mm -mm. I, I was trying to keep quiet the whole time, but I, you know, obviously when uh, around day three, day four, you start feeling a little more comfortable. You're like, okay, you know, he's been, he's been talking to me. He's been chopping jokes at me a little bit here and there. Uh, there was one occasion where they had fake money in the, um, in the scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first reaction, man, you see a, you see something that looks like a $20 bill. You're going to bend down and grab it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I did. I picked it up and I was like, and I looked at it and I was like, oh, it's fake. And he, and he laughed at me. He goes, hey, man, you can take it with you, but that's not going to get you anything. So I was like, all right, well, I mean, I'm still going to take it as a souvenir. I actually still got it right here. Hold on, let me grab it real quick. Yeah, please. Yeah, it's actually still right here. Still got it. I mean, it looks, it looks like the real deal. All right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay. that, that's what it is. But it's, um, So the, the font is just a little bolder. Uh, uh, is that supposed to be Jackson? Yeah, Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Jackson Jackson's face is just a little bit bigger than the big face already. Like, yeah, okay. And then it says right there, it says, this is not for legal use, it is for motion picture. Okay, yeah, yeah. that was going to be my next question there. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. But they yeah. gave... <laughs> Yeah, they make sure, sure. Andrew Jackson look like Bruce Campbell with a wig on there. Like, <laughs> he's got that pronounced jaw that he doesn't have on any of my 20s. Like, fascinating. I did ask him a couple questions. Uh, I remember one of the questions I asked him directly. I said, I said, hey, man, um, you know, do you do you feel like, you know, it, it's having this much for, produ for production changes it up for you? Or, I mean, are you still shooting your style? Mm -hmm. And he was like, still my style, man. It's real mm -hmm. cool, complex. It's still my style. And I was like, bro, because, I mean, this is a $70 million budget. There was explosions. There was trucks okay. being flipped. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what, that's... $70 million should sound like a lot, but in today's action movie world, like it's kind of modest. Like, yeah, 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 that's and that's not a bad thing by any means. Wow, um, yeah, Ron Rodriguez's yeah. style has always been just like I've been a big fan of his, and he's he's a part of that unique fraternity. Like, I don't know how old you are, Sai, but like in the early to mid 90s, dude, there was just this cinema changed again, like it was as close to the 70s, I, I as I think, like. I was a teenager, so like when I'm like, man, this is all like 
fresh and new shit like i've never seen this before and like someone who has seen all the stuff from sounds like yeah the, the reason why you've never seen this because this is all brand new kid but you had names like robert rodriguez you have quentin tarantino kevin smith guillermo del toro john singleton david fickner Carl thomas anderson all are making their debuts in this one small time span all coming out with all these different styles different angles different ways to tell a story to capture the imagination and it's just like dude like when you're standing there you have to like I'm I'm on the middle of something special here, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and the, did you get any contact with Affleck or, or Fickner at all? Like, or are they just like kind of off to themselves? Just because, because, because. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, for for the most part, I mean, they are in character, so it is very, very, very rare that they did speak with us. But it, a lot of it was more so like a a nod, or you know, just a, a little hang ten, or you know, a little peace sign, or you know, a little little thank you. Just because okay. we would walk, we'd walk through it, so nice, man. Nice. Yeah. I um, yeah. like I was saying, uh, doing the research for this episode, and you know, I wanted to go over and make sure I had all the right notes. This is Gaffleck and Elisa Braga and William Fickner, and then I was like, why does this thing say 2021 on it? Like this thing comes out in like four weeks. Why does it say 2021? And then I go to IMDb again. Everything is with a grain of salt with IMDb, but uh, under release is Japan, Mexico may 2021 like when did you guys start filming so we actually started filming uh excuse me no yeah whatever 2021 yeah it was 2021 when we started filming um i can't i can't tell you exactly what month was that but i think it maybe might have been maybe two three weeks after we spoke i want to say oh wow even that close okay when you finish filming and then two years pass like do you forget about it do, do you get an email saying like that movie you did two years ago? That's that's finally coming out now. So I like how... so no, actually what what you do is uh, IMDb kind of gives you a, a little a little head note. They give you a notification. Say hey, this movie's oh. dropping. Yeah, so that's how that's how you kind of figure it out. And then when I saw that, um, I immediately got a notification from a bunch of my buddies who are like, hey man, I think I saw you in the hypnotic uh, trailer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, probably not, man. Probably not. But sure enough, I'm in there. I'm in the 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 first official trailer uh, come out, and I'm, I'm pulling the gun out on uh, Ben Affleck for that scene. Do they give you any weapons training, or is it pretty much just 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 hold the pistol and don't squeeze the trigger, son? Just yeah, yeah. Just hold hold the pistol and just make sure. They, so they, they for a set like that, whenever they give props to extras, they give them rubber guns. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Smart. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm doing a western right now where it's it's uh it's it's live guns, but you know we shooting blanks. But um, ooh, that sounds very dangerous. different. Right? Yeah, very different. How are you feeling about uh shooting blanks on the on a set? Like, well, so, the, so we had the whole thing with um Alec Baldwin like a couple of years ago. There was a tragedy on his set. It's actually changed the industry, uh, hopefully yes. for the better. But lots of sets are like like we're not shooting blanks anymore. There'll be no more real guns. We're gonna do everything in post um that was even a thing with john wick four this year which i think for for me took a little bit away from it but that's not a thing here what was what's training like on the cowboy set so it, it was really cool i mean they they the arm bearer we have uh he's 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 on it so basically he gets two set of eyes so every time a, a gun is on set it's considered a hot gun um you got to go check in with him two sets of eyes plus his so every, three people have to check it Make sure nothing's nothing's in the chamber. When you do fire a blank, one, you're shooting in the direction of nothing, and two, there's no one on that side. So yeah. if you have a scene where you're shooting at someone, you do your whole scene. You know, you're you're pointing a barrel way different direction of what people are in, and Absolutely. then then it's not loaded at all. When mm-hmm. it's time to shoot, it's the the only only the person shooting. They're they're doing it a very old school style. So if you're if you're pulling the trigger. Then literally the only thing on camera is you and the gun. There's no one over there. There's nothing over there. Oh, okay. They pull you pull the trigger and because they they what their thing is they want to get the authenticity of what it looked like in the Western days. Mm-hmm. All the smoke that comes out of the barrel. Okay. So, so that's what they're really trying to capture. But that's how they've been doing all their shots, which is amazing. Which is funny too because when you think about it, I mean they're they're you know having a gunfight with the with the wind. You know they're shooting at Casper. Right, right, it's right. safe. It's safer. Okay. Uh, what about for like the wide shots? Is that when we just go back to plastic guns or rubber guns, and then we'll 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 put the squibs in the post also? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Far out, man. Far out. Yeah. Like I said, um, 
John Wick Four, they they demonstrated that we're like we're just going to do all the flash muzzles uh, in, in post. It's not going to be all the squibs and everything. Um, that movie is so unbelievable as it is. Like one, he kills 150 people in the first 10 <laughs> minutes. So you're just like, oh my god, we got another two hour, two and a half hours of this shit. All right. Um, <laughs> But comparing it to the first one, they were using real squibs and they were using real blanks and they were getting very intimate. And, you know, it. that's why John Wick 1 was so fascinating or so, so compelling. You're like, dude, this is this is all the real stunts we couldn't do in, a, in another movie. But then we get to John Wick 4 and people are wearing bulletproof blazers that are for some reason prone to knife tacks. Uh, it's 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 a whole thing. But um, I actually heard this and I don't know if this is true or this is just a rumor, but I actually heard that. The stunt crew, because they trained so much with Keanu Reeves, that some of the grappling that they were doing on the ground wasn't necessarily um, staged or or choreographed, but they would legit just grapple. Oh. And whatever came, yeah, so it was real grappling, whatever came out. That's what also made it look so authentic for some of the scenes. Um, I think one scene, I believe, where they have a knife, they went ahead and just said, okay, you know, make sure you don't impale the person, but we're going to go ahead and just go for real. Try to... So the stunt guys know exactly what they're doing. These guys are black belts, you know, four mm-hmm. black, four time mm-hmm. black belts. You know, so, but yeah, they would actually really grapple. So that's what gave it that that realness, that authenticity you were saying. Yeah, you're talking about. Are you talking about the first one? Because if you are, I know that knife scene because it's it's very intimate and it's very intense. And you think God, like after that guy gets the knife stabbed into him, like there's five seconds of nothing. We're just like, oh my god, like. I don't know how to feel. And then they do the doorbell gag. And you're like, oh, ha, 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 ha. The tension reliever. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. So you got Hypnotic coming out May 12th. What else is anything else coming out that, that we, we need? Uh, yeah. Needs to be on our side, Pena radar. Yeah, man. Uh, so I just recently got blessed again. Uh, Janelle, we did Orias. I don't know if you remember the project, Orias project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one, um, I do get some some fight scenes in there, some stunt choreography. Loved cool. it. Um, yeah, basically, I'm the guy who everybody gets to throw hands with, which I oh, loved. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All but, right. Uh, so that was fun. Um, but with Dana, the same director, and Janelle uh, pr- was a producer on this next one, we had Sean Young from Blade Runner and Doom. Cool. And Eric Roberts. Uh, Eric Roberts, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they He's they they came down, yeah. They came down to Texas and they did a a, a short film called My O One, mm-hmm. and I play the robot for for that one. Um, so it was just us three, and yeah, I, I, man, it was a huge blessing and a huge, you know, op- opportunity. I think just because these guys are they're they're a list celebrity actors, they're they're awesome. So I got to 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 go ahead and do this project, you know, co leading with them. So that was that's 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 coming up pretty soon. I also have this Western I'm shooting right now. I'm really excited about it. It's my first Western. Um, mm-hmm. I play a Mexicano from uh, south of the border, but I cross into Texas. I've been in Texas for a little while. I'm a ranch hand and, uh, you know, get involved with a little bit of illegal activity in the wild, wild west. So that's always yeah. fun. Is yeah, this with Cynthia me. Rothrock? No, this is with uh, Travis uh, Travis Mills. Okay. Uh, right. Now. Cool. Yeah, right now it's being it's being co-directed by Travis Mills because Travis Mills is, is shooting something in Europe right now. And John Mars, John Mars is a Western is a Western actor, uh, a known Western actor here in Texas, and uh, yeah, he's doing a phenomenal job directing right now. He's he's an actor, so he kind of understand. He knows he knows how to talk. He knows how to how to get the ball moving. So it's been it's been fun, man. We I've shot four days already so far. We're moving to uh, some prairie lands so we can go ahead and get a little more, you know, riding um, through the prairie with, with with some horses. Yeah, man. Like when, when we first met uh, seven months ago, like. I started the conversation off like, dude, you hit the ground running. So when we first talked again, IMDb, everything is a grain of salt, but you already had like nine projects in the can, three more coming out. As we're talking this one, IMDb, again, grain of salt. You had 12 projects down, 13 on the way. Who is your representative? Who, who's representing you? Like, who's getting you all this work, dude? Because they're doing a great job. And I hope you get them a bottle of scotch for Christmas. Man, I... I... They they have got they've had gotten me good work here in Texas. Um, I, I'm with the Boyson Agency. We get a lot of commercial work, um, but Kush, I, I to say the truth, man. I'm I'm still out there shaking hands. I'm rubbing elbows. Good. I'm you know yeah. I'm I'm literally just trying to get my name out there, however I can. Um, just got a, a 
confirmation for a SAG project for uh, a SAG project in Atlanta. Outstanding. Um, yeah, so I, I'm out there. And, you know, Texas will only submit for Texas. Um, oh. I submit in L.A., I submit in Atlanta, I submit all across all across the country. So it's a combination of of my agency and myself, man. But I, I yeah, I'm I'm trying to make it happen, man. So I, I know that, you know, when you got to strike while the iron's hot, and that's mm-hmm. kind of what I've been doing since I started. Um, it's just keeping the ball going, keep, keeping, the, keeping the ball moving. I did a project in L.A. called Guadalajara, and mm-hmm. it's my first little rom-com. We've talked before. I never thought I'd be doing rom coms. I'm an action guy. You know, I like mm-hmm. to stay fit. I like to, you know, be a dude. I like to be a guy on, on set. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, did a rom com, and uh, so got it. Got it. That one in Atlanta is, is a comedy. So it's starting to expand, man, and, and and it's really pushing me as an actor, which I love. I love it. That's great, man. You're you're getting more and more exposed to the business. You're seeing all the sides that you know you don't normally think about when you're when you're watching. Whether you're watching a movie or a TV show or your favorite local sports team, like there's a lot of shit happening off frame that you never think about. Like, are you thinking about like trying? Are you thinking about maybe trying writing or directing or producing? Like, it's still early for you, but any of these things, like, hmm, maybe maybe that could be fun. Like, I I thought of it. The, the thought crosses your mind, especially whenever you're like in the zone, and you're doing, or you just finish a scene. This is mm-hmm. this is where I started to realize, like, okay, I I understand why people want to write or want to produce. When you finish a scene and in your head, you're still in that scene, but they yelled cut. You're like, oh, man, this could have gone well if I kept going this direction. Mm-hmm. And you make up a whole nother storyline just off, you know, finishing off that that scene. And I, so, yeah, it, it has crossed my mind. Man, producing would be, a, you know, so f- fun. Directing would be awesome. Um, but as of right now, my passion for for acting, for being in front of the camera, it's it it it's it keeps getting bigger and bigger like that. That fire just keeps just keeps getting lit. So uh, for now, just I'm just I'm staying hard nosed and just acting. Okay. Let's flash forward. It's ten years from now. You're you're finally at your peak. You're at your strength. Like the future is super bright for Cy Pena. Denzel Washington is like I don't have time for Denzel. Scarlett Johansson. Who is she? I don't have time. How will I do lunch later? All right. But all jokes aside, is what's a character you want to play? What's a story you want to tell that is maybe just in your head maybe you saw a script a few months ago like what is what is something you want to portray to the world that's a it's a great question so i know last time we spoke um talked about wanting to be a latino superhero mm. uh, right now the blue beetle is coming out mm-hmm. that's that's a he's that's dc's uh, and they got an actor and he's great he's the same kid uh he comes out in a uh, cobra yeah, uh, Holo, uh, Sholo, uh, so-and-so, but yeah, Krobra. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, you know, he, um, he's a great actor. So that, that one, I was like, oh man, I, I didn't work fast enough. I didn't work hard enough. Mm-hmm. As, you know, as, as I was working towards, um, even, even Mr. But, Sholo didn't work fast enough. There was a, um, there was a Latino superhero movie that came out in 2018, very small stuff, but it was again, produced by a stunt team. Um, why am I blanking on the name? The movie was called El Chicano. And the biggest name in it was George Lopez, who is also in Blue Beetle coming up here. Um, yep. El Chicano is part Batman, part uh, Punisher, I guess part Blue Beetle, but he's, he's just a mask, leather jacket, piece of shit out of bad guys with a bat. Um, the story is actually kind of compelling. Mexican nationalists, yeah. Cy, are still right. holding a grudge about losing California, and they're going to take that motherfucker yeah. back. And the only one that can stop him is El <laughs> Chicano. <laughs> And it's a pretty entertaining movie until they do George Lopez's hero shots without the mask. Because when the mask is on, it's it's just some muscular dude. Pow, 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 pow. But then, like, no offense to Mr. Lopez. He's he's up there. He's, like, closer to 60 or whatever now. But uh, El Chicano's got a gut and he's got yeah. jowls. <laughs> <laughs> and George yeah, Lopez is going to strangle me now if he understands. Is <laughs> um, uh, so don't feel bad about missing on the Blue Beetle, and I have a feeling there'll be plenty of plenty of Hispanic superheroes coming all down the line. But um, yeah, man, that that happened. So yeah, yeah. But and then another one that I I really really have seen. You know, I know in the industry when we're represented, it's a lot a lot of times it's going to be a lot with the cartel, and I understand the cartel. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you know, we it's a it's a culture. It's a it's a whole thing. 
So I, I would love to get a uh, some kind of scene. It's not made. It's not it hasn't been made yet. Maybe, maybe maybe I'll write it. I don't know. Maybe I'll direct it. But something that tells a story of what it's really like being from the border. Okay. Your parents, yeah, your parents crossing, having you here without the whole aspect of the drugs and and all that. Just the culture clash we have. Just in the border, man. I always tell everybody this: it's not just Mexicans that cross the border. You have Guatemalans, you have Ecuadorians. I mean, you have from all parts of Latin America, from all places of South America. They're all they're all coming here, and their first stop is in the border. Mm-hmm. As, you know, when they get, get to America. So this is the culture clash and what it's really like to to be from there. Because I think, you know, it's it's a pretty cool story, man. I, I always tell um, everyone they when I speak Spanish to them. A lot, of, a lot of people, especially from Mexico or whatever, they already know where I'm from because of all the different slang and dialects that I have intertwined in my Spanish because I'm from the border. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. When I speak so, so, uh, Spanish, ben Hernandez Bray is the director and writer of El Chicano and uh, Joe Carnahan, who who does all, all the super duper minor action flicks. So he was a part of that as well. Um, nice. nice. What's your favorite Robert Rodriguez movie? Man, you it's hard to pick, right? Oh, mariachi, is, man. My, right. And mariachi was a good one. Um, Dust till dawn was. Dust till dawn is a great one. I think I'd have to, I'd have to go with Dust till dawn, man. That was that was a phenomenal film. Full circle. So Full circle. that set in Austin is that that set where uh, Dust till dawn is filmed. The mm. or the the titty twister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> yeah, that set. Is where I was a male dancer for Walker Texas Ranger. <laughs> yep. yep, my my first SAG, my first SAG credit, um, or my first SAG uh, thing was was in the same as in Robert Rodriguez's is. is um, so I knew SAG. you were on Walker or the newest Walker. I didn't know you were a male dancer. Like we're talking Magic Mike style dancing here. Yeah, uh, so they didn't have me dancing, uh, but because okay. uh, because of my you see my I mean you see my body man I mean you see my back you see my chest you see my face mm-hmm. um, if I was not in the scene I was the only male dancer that they used so um, mm-hmm. I pushed the storyline forward if not it would just look like some random guy just got up on stage danced and came yeah. to talk to you know um, so yeah so they were like hey well you you get a credit because you push the storyline forward I was like hey uh, it's early in my career I'll take it. Why I'll take not, it. man. Why not? Is is there like an audience there now watching you not dance or like like the, I know women are going through this all the time, but like feels kind of like you know like exposed. I think is maybe not the right word, but like um, no, expo- exposed is the word, brother. It exposed was, is it, the word. It was forty degrees, man. It was forty degrees, and I was <laughs> I was in a little a little underwear in my chonies, man. I was in some underwear, so. <laughs> Exposed is the word, man. It was cold and it was it was it was definitely one well, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking warm thoughts, man. Thinking warm thoughts. <laughs> oh no. Oh, yeah. I love from dusk till dawn. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen it, but I I can tell you there's been more times where I'll just turn on the TV and all of a sudden Selma Hayek's doing the dance and I'm like, all right. And then she turns into a snake and I'm like, all right, I'm, that that. That's the best part. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. so sorry. you've been very generous with your time, man. I wish we could talk longer. I don't want to take up any more time here. But, folks, May 12th, Robert Rodriguez is hypnotic. It's going to be a hard R. And it stars Ben Affleck, Elisa Braga, William Fickner, and Mr. Cy Pena. Cy, where can folks find you? Uh, you guys can find me on my Instagram. It's Cy sai underscore p-i-n-a as well as facebook same thing sai p-i-n-a and um you can also look me up on imdb saipina that's what's up folks i do some stuff here you know what i do it's the original waffle box the people's podcast it's the best part of wednesdays you accept no substitutes it also makes the ladies go woo 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 and I hope uh, tonight, if, if you're listening to this the day it drops, the Warriors are in game six of the playoffs of round one. We hope they kill it tonight, but uh, fingers crossed. Otherwise, will we have an episode next week? That all depends on the dubs. So uh, maybe you want the Warriors to lose. Maybe we want the Warriors to win, but uh, that's what's going on here. So for Cy Pena, I've been Kush Hayes. You've been you. And- Grow doors, my
micro dose, micro dose, micro dose, micro dose, micro dose, micro dose, yeah, micro dose. From the Bosnet family. That set is where I was a male dancer for Walker, Texas Ranger.